Now, our training on community, on, on collaborative conflict management has evolved over time. It, it's taken a number of modalities. Initially, we, we started by training uh, practitioners at country level, uh, and then gradually we moved into training of trainers program, which we have actually delivered uh, in Africa, in Asia, and in Latin America. Now, the aim of the program is mainly to strengthen the capacities of selected trainers uh, for them to be able to develop, but also to facilitate high quality training. Uh, and here we are talking about training on conflict management, particularly in uh, the forestry sector. So I wanted to share with you the fact that this training is actually uh, delivered in, in, in four phases, particularly. And these phases run over a period of one year, but with effective engagement of about six to seven weeks uh, period. The first phase is basically looking at the activities that we need to do prior to organizing the training of trainers, uh, including participants' assessment. Now, why do we talk about targeting uh, in, in this regard? Why, why is targeting important? We think that investing in quality trainees is vital. Vital for the process, because uh, you can imagine some of you who have been involved in trainings, if you have very good animated trainees, chances are that you actually engage them into co-facilitation in animating others, but also in sharing their own experiences and expertise, which in effect enriches the training. Uh, but also quality trainees ensure that uh, the training is sustainable uh, and is followed up in their own countries. So I'd like to share with you the process that we take uh, in our approach to this training of trainers. First of all, we begin by identifying a collaborating partner. Now in the case of Asia, we had a credible organization called the Regional Center for uh, Community Forestry Training. It's called RECOFT in, in, in short. And they are involved also in training activities. So we take some time to identify these collaborating partners, mainly because they work as the conduit for, for, for these modules that, uh, that we deliver, especially on collaborative conflict management. And we work through letters of agreements in which we uh, identify specific <coughs> responsibilities and roles for, for each other, uh, and then we go into delivery. After having agreed on the roles and responsibilities and, and, and have, having understood the framework of the training, then we go into announcing the training. Now we send out an announcement which is sent to all the countries. In this case, in Asia, we're working in six countries. These countries were China, Cambodia, Vietnam. So, but in these countries, we send out uh, an announcement of the training three months in advance of the training and, and already we send specifically to our FAO offices so that they can pass on this to the government agencies. But we also send it to international organizations, uh, NGOs, uh, and, and any of those partners that we have identified that could have actually uh, people to nominate to come for this uh, uh, training. In the announcement, we clearly specify the objective of the training uh, and the mode in which it will run, including all these four phases but also indicate that we would like commitment uh, of the organizations that are nominating people that will actually be able to support them. This we shall see later on. But that's part of the process. Now, after the organizations have nominated uh, people that they, they think are useful for this kind of training, we follow a process of self-assessment. We, we have a questionnaire that we have developed, which in effect helps uh, the, the nominees helps us to understand more about the people who have been nominated. Their understanding, their grounding on the subject matter, but also their uh, previous work related to training, for example. Uh, then after they have filled in self-assessment, they send it back to us, and then later on, from what they have sent us, we organize a Skype or a phone discussion with them. Now, this is jointly organized between FAO and RECOFT, which is the other organization I talked about, the partner organization. 
but also with uh, our regional office uh, in RAP. And, and then in this discussion, we get to understand more about the participants, what they have been doing, but we also seek particular information on their commitment to actually engage in this long process, because we're not talking about just a training of two weeks, we're actually talking about an engagement over a period of one year uh, in, this, in this process. So that gives us further insights on the trainees. Then uh, after agreeing uh, on a number of issues with them, then we seek formal commitment. Formal commitment meaning in writing <coughs> from their institutions that they are willing to support them throughout the process in terms of uh, allowing them time off to be able to prepare for particularly the national level training, because that's another phase after their training, that they will have time to actually organize national level trainings to facilitate them. But where possible also that uh, these institutions are able to contribute some financial resources mm -hmm. to, to support their, their work uh, in, in the country. And after that is obtained, then we make a final decision, of course, based on agreed criteria, criteria, best criteria mainly on the characteristic of the participant, but also on the level of commitment from their organizations, uh, and, and of course budgets available to us, because in, in some cases you find that they nominate four or five people and inevitably you, you can only take two or, or, or one. But in the case of <coughs> Asia, for each of these countries, we ensured that we had at least three uh, candidates that, that, that we are finally selected. One of the challenges we have is ensuring adequate contact over the entire duration. Uh, one year is, is not a short time, but after one year is, is even more important to ensure that actually these people, besides having done some work in their own countries, that they still remain active uh, in, in the training field. Managing relationships and, and, and you know, understanding of partners who have nominated their candidates and here you are, you're only able to take two. Particularly from government, we found it's, it was quite a big challenge for us because, I mean, the, the governments particularly were telling us, look, we have given you four names and you are taking only two. What, what shall we tell the other two? Does that mean that they are unable to do this work? Or you feel that they are inadequate or, you know? So, especially with government, it's been quite a strenuous relationship in, in that case. But with NGOs, that's really understandable. But then the other challenge is related to the expectations, uh, particularly from, from our partners, um, especially post-TOT, post, uh, uh, because there, there are other responsibilities, there are other roles we expect them to play, uh, but they also have budgetary implications. And, and these expectations continuously uh, you know, come up, and, and, and it's difficult to deal with them at some point. We have learned a few lessons, which uh, I, I want also to share with you. We think that a conscious uh, investment in this process, however long it looks, is, is actually worthwhile to undertake because uh, the, the quality and, and you know, level of outcome that you're able to get out of this uh, is, is worthwhile. Good choice of a collaborating partner is very, very important. Uh, in this case, for us with RECOF, actually, we, we, we had so many other repo effects. RECOF <coughs> used its own budget to organize additional training activities, actually, in that region from, from this process. They were able, uh, for example, to resource mobilize and do a, a, a training on very, very specific subject of mediation and inv involved these same participants in addition to their other participants, of course, because this was their process. Uh, but also because they are involved actively in this work in these countries, continuous monitoring, uh, mentoring, and, and coaching of the participants has continued well long after the training has happened. So I think this is very important. Of course, it takes a while to be able to choose a credible partner, but this is a very important aspect. The multiplier effects and deepening of the outcomes of the training is, is something we learned. I mean, some of the participants that we got from Vietnam, for example, were coming from an academic institution. These actually took up the training to, to develop their own short course on conflict management in their own institution because they thought it was something that is worthwhile to do. 
but also we've had, uh, uh, for example, in Cambodia, we had the NGO forum there in Cambodia, which took this training up because they had trainees who they seconded to come to this training, and eventually they took this up as a, a, a training activity in one of the regions uh, of, of Simrip, actually, and, and still continuing. Uh, the other lesson is, is related, of course, to the question around what motivates the participants. Uh, but in our view, I think that there are a range of motivations, you know, ranging from the fact that they're able to advance their careers, uh, they're, they're able to get into larger networks beyond just their own countries, because this is a regional, a regional initiative. But also, especially for participants, and this was specific for Africa, because in Africa we also had participants coming from the private sector, uh, particularly the consultancy wings, where they actually saw this as another opportunity for, for income streams for their own organizations. And finally, of course, uh, demonstrating uh, commitment of the institutions for us was key, because with that formal writing from an institution that we actually commit ourselves to support this trainee throughout the process was key because then everybody actually uh, took this organization seriously to their word and we didn't have any problem actually. All of them, all of these six countries in which we are involved in Asia supported their, their trainees to be able to deliver a national level training, at least one of them, using their own resources and us providing technical support. So I think this was a good lesson for us. And, and I think I would like to stop here for now.